Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of the Tech and Innovation Summit 2021. Uh, we are going to start the stage four, wherein we will first have a fireside chat followed by a panel discussion. And it is my pleasure to welcome Naveen Gulati, CIO Cardeco, for a one on one discussion with uh, Sumant Narai, uh, business head Akamai India. And the topic of discussion is what it takes to build a security first customer acquisition mindset. Uh, I request the audience to keep posting their questions for the speakers and uh, uh, welcome Suman, welcome uh, Naveen, uh, over to you Suman, the st stage is yours. Thanks Aurav. Good morning to everyone. So um, e-commerce has transformed the way we do business in India. Now the Indian e-commerce market is expected to capture over 11% of the total Indian retail market and is poised to reach almost 200 billion by 2026. The recent rise in digital literacy has also led to an influx of investments in e-commerce firms, thereby leveling the market for new players to set up their base and to help build innovative products slash platforms that disrupt the old guard. Now, overall, the Indian e-commerce industry has been on an upward growth trajectory and is expected to surpass the US to become the second largest e-commerce market in the world by 2034. Now at Akamai, whilst we continue to see growth in traffic on our platform, we also continue to see substantial increase both in the complexity and the volume of cyber attacks across various sectors, and especially across e-commerce and retail, which seem to be the most targeted sectors. Uh, interestingly, India was amongst the top three countries that were targeted by attackers in 2020. Now, the good news is that most organizations have come a long way from looking at cybersecurity as a cost center to now an enabler or even a business differentiator, which helps build trust with end users and in turn drives business growth. However, when you're on an aggressive growth trajectory to acquire new customers, technology and cybersecurity leaders are usually left with a tough choice of having to prioritize their resources and investments between rolling out new features and focusing on security. Now, with that context, I'd like to welcome the CIO of Girnar Saw to Kar Dekho, Naveen Gulati, to join us on the session and share his insights on what it takes to build a security first customer acquisition mindset. Naveen, great to have you. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Suman. Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Okay. So, Naveen, let's dive straight, uh, straight into it, right? So, let me first start with just the mindset piece. Um, so, we've come a long way from where security used to be a bit of an afterthought to know where security has shifted left and is essentially embedded in the early part of the app development phase. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how you and your teams have embraced this mindset shift? All right, um, a very good question, Suman. So, uh, it, uh, so since we are a purely a B2C platform and so security had, had always been a part of the culture. Uh, one motto that we live by at, at in our soft car Deco, is that we are a customer centric a company so a customer comes first right and it's the experience that we deliver to the customer which really matters us the most now uh, typically i had seen in the industry people look at experience in terms of better ui better ux fast fast time to deliver right so uh, say super fast or super slow uh, latencies right but but for us that experience also has security deeply ingrained in that so uh, essentially when we are handling a PII data, it becomes our responsibility to handle that to the very best. So, mm -hmm. uh, so coming back to your question, uh, this has never been a challenge to us. But yes, in the industry, when I speak to other peers, I have seen this mindset uh, now shifting in. And uh, largely, to some extent, also thanks to COVID, uh, the, the surface of attacks has increased. Uh, like you rightly said, India is now the third most attacked, uh, attacked country across the globe. Right. So, uh, so I think that's where every organization today has sensitized that security is, is a front runner. Right. So, and that's getting deeply ingrained in the systems and processes. Okay. So let me, let me, let me just double down on that. Right. So like, especially when you're on a, on a growth trajectory, like the one that you've been on, right. Like you end up having to prioritize resources. Right. Now, how do you strike a balance between, you know, scaling up or providing the right user experience or even rolling out new features uh, versus focusing on security to keep the bad actors away. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, 
see uh, it all starts with your processes and once your processes are firm laid down they are deeply disseminated across the organization then comes the tech part and then come the people part so uh, we started we realized that this is this is very important and it's not that things had always been very rosy very good right but uh, that was close to what what some a few years back we started migrating our journey to a pure ci cd pipeline driven uh, release management process and where we have source code security checks built into our pipeline mm -hmm. so if the pipeline fails uh, sorry if if the ranking fails the, the code doesn't get deployed to production it's as simple as that so so security is now a part of the entire gatekeeping thing we work in line with the qa so when you know the qa says okay this the functionality is working well and then comes the security bit and only then the code gets deployed and then we have other supplementary processes like regular vapt checks we do bug bounty uh, we encourage bug bounty hunters to work with us uh, we do periodic campaigns with them right so there there are a lot of things that we do and which has really helped us improve our security posture across all platforms got got it. uh next one is um is is i'm sure is a hot topic with a lot of folks which is essentially budgeting for you know cybersecurity initiatives now on one hand you know we hear a lot about how the average cost of a security breach has you know, is increasing year over year and i think it's about now 16 crores or there about right and on the other hand we hear still about organizations struggling to prioritize budgets for security uh could you share a little bit about how you manage cybersecurity budgets in your organization mm -hmm. it's it's actually a, a the most trickiest part to answer so when so i uh, this is a dilemma that every one of us faces uh, all the cio ceos because everything else is very easy to quantify you need more compute it's easy to quantify the productivity right so uh, you need newer tools you map it to the business value that it brings in more sales faster sales faster numbers coming out so but security is one thing uh, where where you can't really define how much is good enough right but the way that we have started shaping our budgets is uh, it all starts actually a step before budgeting it's about how the leader of security infos either the cio or the cso he is driving infosec across the organization across the board so uh, how we have done it at narsoft car dekho uh, we have dashboards which give us good insights on how our security initiatives are performing so for example we use waf which gives us a very clear metric between the traffic that we are handling how much has been the malicious traffic and how much has been good traffic which are bots that are attacking us and how our defense systems have been handling them very well so so when these insights go out to the cfo to the ceo to the board right then the conversation around security investments become very easy to drive because you are showing good value insights coming in so though i cannot quantify how much money we would have spent had we been hacked right but it generates that sensitization across the organization and then that's something that helps us drive our budgets ahead right so so again a, a very small analogy like how many door locks would you put at your home is two good enough is four good enough is a cctv good enough right so it's not until you have been breached you realize what i was doing was good enough or not it is no direct roi but it's it's a journey so every day you need to drive that journey across the organization so that people are aware how important these initiatives are to the organization right? and that's that's one way which help which has helped me drive the budgets better got it got it okay so um let's just switch gears a little bit and and talk about your you know your end customers or your end users right and how they perceive all these investments now obviously you know a lot of most organizations have, have come a long way from perceiving cybersecurity just as a cost center uh, to now an enabler or even a business differentiator right uh, and this actually helps build trust with your end users and which in turn drives business growth now one i'd like to get your thoughts on this and and two can you also talk a little bit about how if security investments have indeed had any positive impact on your business metrics yeah so uh, so they definitely have a great impact on our investments uh, first talking about how it impacts our customers so uh, the more better our security posture is the more trust we gain from our customers 
So today when our customers see us as an organization which is equally uh, you know which is equally uh, uh, proactive about securing their data securing the customer's experience uh, securing the ju- securing the journey or handling data that we hold about our customers with us so uh, that gives us an edge and uh, just for an example so be- today between us and our nearest competitor we have a 3x lead over the traffic that we handle right so between india's number 1 and number 2 we are at 9 billion hits a month right yeah. so so of course that also reflects a customer's confidence on how how they perceive us as an organization how they perceive us as a brand it, it's the various security measures that we take in place uh, it's the certifications that we hold and all of these are well promoted across our platform so today you visit car dekho you go to about a section you can read a lot including things that we do to protect your data to deliver a secure journey to you as a customer and that has shaped well for us uh, these numbers speak for itself that how our customers see us as a more secure platform to transact with right. wow. so so uh, so i would say of course it 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 has an indirect roi but it does dif- it does really well it makes a difference when you talk to customers when you talk to investors right so uh, that has had a very very deep impact across all the forums got it got it okay yeah. wonderful uh i mean so now obviously to implement all of this uh, you know that really comes down to like just talent right now on our platform obviously we're seeing a substantial increase both in the volume and complexity of these cyber attacks and as you can imagine protecting against these rap- this kind of like a rapidly evolving uh, landscape uh, you need quality cyber security talent now it usually comes down to either kind of building these capabilities in house Uh, or leveraging you know cyber trusted cyber security partners uh, could you share just some broad guidelines on how to think about you know building these building whether you know building these in house capabilities versus relying on cyber security partners i think a, a good one again sumant <laughs> uh, probably you're asking me to lay out all my strategies in one session all together <laughs> but okay so uh, when it comes to talent on infosec uh, first thing that any organization need to really mark out well is is this core to me or not if it's non core it's always better to work with partners who have who have that process as their core business model and the same principle applies to infosec as well so we have a very lean and mean internal team which does routine scans which does lightning between stakeholders uh, which does the which drives ra- rather the entire education process across the organization right because that's something that we saw is an ongoing exercise and where we could do with a way fairly lean team there but then when it comes to pure play deep cyber security that's something that we outsource we rely on partners we have a we have a pretty solid due diligence process on how we shortlist and work with our partners and then let them drive the infosec part for us because that's their core it's not core to me my core is media my core is automotive right it's their go to do the infosec and that's that's where and it has really worked well for us uh, we have seen clear difference in reports on a scan done by us vis-a-vis a scan done by a partner right and that's where we realized that having everything in in house will not work it's not scalable and then of course this attrition you need to uh, really harness your talent right and and again for any good ethical hacker who is looking to develop a a career in infosec mm-hmm. i would not be able to give him the right playground when you are working with a partner when you are in a services firm you have better talent because that talent also gets a hell lot of different customers to work with different processes to look into so their maturity curve versus your internal team would always have that gap and that's the reason why we work with very closely with good partners who help us secure our overall environment Okay, that's that's very well put, Navi. That's very well put. I mean, I think we're almost at the top of uh, top of the hour uh, for our session. But I see a whole bunch of questions. I'll probably take one for now, give, given the paucity of time. Uh, There's one question about when targeting a specific audience, how should brands ensure they are valid users rather than bots or other forms of invalid users? I think <laughs> so Suman you can answer this better because uh, we have been using Akamai and just for the audience uh, knowledge and and the results have been pretty phenomenal so uh, now Suman you can you can probably share more 
on what you offer to target to to you know to dis uh, disseminate between bots and light traffic. Sure. Look, I, I look. I think I'll I'll just add that I think it really comes down to you know having specific capabilities to detect bots, uh, and then what you do with that really depends on your business use case, right? And sometimes you just want to obviously slow them down. Some, sometimes you just want to deny them, or sometimes you want to give them a whole differentiated experience. But I think what it comes down to is that this is a big menace right now, especially for online firms, and it really comes down to having specialized capabilities to detect bots. And then obviously figure out the right strategy in terms of mitigating that. I think I'll leave that for now. But if folks are interested, we can obviously take that offline and 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 share more information. Uh, but I think with that, I think we we come to the the end of the session. Uh, and I mean, uh, this is a very informative session. I think for me, like some of the key takeaways was I think the big one really was about the culture that you build within the organization and how you use data points to constantly sensitize not just your team, but even just a larger organization about the importance of security. And then obviously in getting the right resources and investments to continue on that path. I think what is very reassuring for a lot of users, I'm sure, is that it has a business impact. I think those stats are very staggering, right? In terms of almost 3x compared to your closest competitor, that that validates the kind of investments that we need for security. So very, very, uh, very, very, you know, uh, useful information. Once again, Naveen, thanks for taking the time out and uh, sharing all of this with us.